What's going on, guys? Tobin here with you. Thanks for checking us on out. Uh, Tobin and Leroy show. If you guys like that, go on over to WQAM's YouTube page. That's where you guys can find us there. Now, it's the same page as the last one. Just change the name on it. So uh, if you haven't subscribed over there, go check us out for all the silly sauce, all the fun. And, uh, you know, that's uh, that, that's that's that that train continues to roll. We're now on from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. So hope you guys will join us on uh, WQAM, your new home for Miami Heat basketball. And the Miami Heat, they uh, continued their preseason play on Monday and took out the Houston Rockets, really handled them. Uh, very similar, I would say, to the game against the Grizzlies where they got off to a bit of a rough start. Uh, it was a starting lineup of Gabe Vincent, Victor Oladipo, Dwayne Dedman, uh, Max Struess, and Haywood Highsmith. That was your uh, that was your starting lineup against the Rockets. And uh, got off to a little bit of a, a rocky start in this one until, really, uh, Duncan Robinson came back in. And Duncan Robinson, like he was uh, being the catalyst against the Memphis Grizzlies, him starting to hit threes. Very much the case in this one. He comes out of the gate and hits four from downtown to get the Miami Heat on top. And it was uh, a very, very impressive showing from Duncan Robinson for the second straight game, third straight game, really, from Dunks. He uh, he looked fantastic. Max Struess in this game also looking really great as they're both vying for playing time. They're both vying for, I guess, what a lot of people would say is the same role. And you had a game where Duncan Robinson hit four from downtown. Max Struess, he hit five from downtown. You had Victor Oladipo make his preseason debut. And... Uh, you know, Vic looking a little bit rusty offensively. Uh, they have uh, slow rolled him a little bit. You know, had a uh, had a had a couple of good moves to the basket. A good uh, had a good end one at one point, but um, definitely looked like he had not uh, he had not engaged in basketball in a little bit. As uh, you know, very hopeful that he is going to have a, a monster role on this team. But this story again, I would say, out of these guys, you know, you know what those guys are going to do, and you know what you're going to get from Dunks. You know what you're going to get from Max Struess. I mean, we know what the those guys at their best, what their skill set is. I would say, honestly, again, the the the, the fun stories of this game were the young guys, uh, particularly this little uh, this little trio coming off of the bench, and that was Jamal Kane, the Kane train. All aboard! Kane Train, looking awesome, dude. This guy does it all. He flies. He flies to the rim. Got the stroke. Gets rebounds. Offensive rebounds. He had four offensive rebounds yesterday. He was putting back all over the place, dude. Just very, very impressive. Had a block. Filling up the box score all over the place. Then you had Jovic, who got off to a really shaky start where he had shot up a couple of air balls, but really settled in in the second half. Jovic finished with 15 points, 12 rebounds, four assists, two steals. This dude is. Uh, th- th- let me tell you something about this Jovic. He's a little thief. Uh, you know, you may you may be fooled by his by his 19 uh, year old baby face, but this dude participates in thievery. It's very very impressive to see what you're getting from the the Kane Jovic duo for now the third straight preseason game. These guys have looked awesome, um, and it was cool to see because they were at home. No Bam, no Jimmy, no Kyle, no Tyler. So your four top guys sitting it on out. And by the way, Bam had the he had like the sweetest shirt on. It was like a, a it was like a white shirt with the 06 champions on the back. And I think it was like a Miami Herald. I don't know if they're selling that at the uh I don't know if that's like got a you got that at a vintage shop or they're selling that somewhere. But that was a sweet ass shirt that that, that he was wearing. Jimmy and Kyle, they were up to shenanigans, uh, all types of shenanigans that were going on there. But I'll tell you the guy who really stood out in this game and I thought was the the real catalyst for the second half takeover. That was Drew Smith. Drew Smith going out there. He's now been with the team for a couple of years on the Sioux Falls Sky Force, the Summer League team. And he was cut into the basket. He was really aggressive like really aggressive trying to get in there and he was you know taking some some impressive threes he had two two from downtown he was six of 11 from the floor I thought that he looked really really good in this game man uh you know definitely I would say out of his showings was was one of his better ones but he had the play of the game 
to Drew Smith, where it was uh, to Drew Smith had to play the game to Jamal Kane, the Kane train, where Drew Smith, Jamal Kane, they connect. Drew Smith throws basically like a sky hook from the free throw line, and Jamal Kane picks it up, dunks it down for the poster. Looked awesome, dude. It really, really was. Very impressive by the young guns. Continue to say this for the Miami Heat. That that remains to be uh, just so, so impressive. Jamal Kane getting himself a two-way contract. I don't know if Drew Smith is going to be in that category. But, look, if something were to happen, if there were injuries to happen, I think that he has definitely shown himself to be more ready, more confident than he ever has been um, in his time with Miami. He looked really, really good. Really, really good in that fourth quarter, especially where – you know, Houston was fighting back a little bit. And Houston was, you know, again, they were playing their main guys. They're not, you know, I think one of the creme de la creme of the the league. But they, you know, they have a, a guy in Jalen Green who people think the world of. Kevin Porter, uberly talented. Jalen Green had 25 points. Kevin Porter had 21. Both of these guys have a lot of talent. They also have Boban. I had no idea that Boban was on the Rockets. And it was adorable because Boban from Serbia Gave a little hug to uh to 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 Nikola Jovic after the game. And as the Heat Instagram account, Bobby and Yovi. You know, it was a mwah, it was a moment there, dude. It was but I didn't Boban was out there, he played eight minutes. He was closing the game. And I was like, man, that feels a little disrespectful to Boban. Like, Boban has been in this league for a long time. And how old is Boban at this point? He is 34 years old, just turned 34 years old. And he's he's a he's a behemoth. He's a he's a behemoth, but he's so fun. Who does who do, who wouldn't have love having a little Boban on your team? You know what what a, what a delight that must be for these young guys out there. He really is like it is a marvel to see him warm up. Um, uh, duh, so big he is. He's a, he's he's a moose. He is a moose to the fullest, and is completely huge. And so to see him out there it made me happy, but also to see him out there made me a little sad. So the Miami have one preseason game left. That'll be Wednesday against the New Orleans Pelicans. That will be. One week out from their home opener and their season opener against the Chicago Bulls, Goran Dragic rolling into town. And I would say, I, you know, it's tough to know what direction Spolster was going to go in. I kind of felt like this was, it was going to be one or the other, it was going to be a quote-unquote dress rehearsal. I know he doesn't like that term that much. You know, they may be extra cautious with Caleb and, and Tyler just uh, for, for little nagging things. But Jimmy, Kyle... Bam, this is all rest. I would expect them to get a little bit of run on Wednesday um, just to just to kind of get, you know, a, a little bit more basketball in and, and maybe we'll get a look at that first starting lineup. Maybe Spo will show his cards or, you know, in the most likely case, he won't because, you know, he he is uh, he's a rascal in that time. You know, he's going to tell us there's all these lines. There's all these options. These are first world problems. All that type of stuff are first class problems. He is, uh, so maybe he won't show his hand at all. Maybe it'll just be completely in disguise. But either way, um, I would expect that those guys will get a little bit of something, a little something in that in that next game. And I think from this preseason, you know, so far to me, the most important things have been Jamal Kane and Nikola Jovic and Duncan Robinson. I think those have been the biggest three things, more so than figuring out lineup. One, Duncan Robinson, the confidence, he talked about this in a in a in our in our sit down, which I'm going to release this week, just about how much of this summer was dedicated to getting himself in the right mental space, and he looks like that. You know, after a, a, a bit of a stinker in the opener where he couldn't get anything to drop, but you got to see that he was trying some different things. The execution has been quite right in the next three games that have followed, and I thought that his leadership really shined through. In both these games, Max Struess looked absolutely fantastic in this one. And that was cool, too. But definitely finding the gem of Jamal Cain. That was huge because you always like to know who are the next guys that Miami is going to find, who are going to be the next guys that contribute. If somebody goes down, who can have that responsibility? But I would st I would say the most important revelation out of anything has been Jovic. I think Nikola Jovic showing that he can do a lot of things that not are necessarily scoring. You know, and I think that that's important, not just being out there and being a guy who needs the ball in his hands, which he does like having the ball in his hands. Don't get me wrong, but showing you that he has a, a nose for the rock and I th NFTR being able to find ways to get turnovers, you know, being able to get rebounds, 
being able to, you know, get fouled and, 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 you know, be confident going to the basket, all of these things you're seeing from him. And, and you know what? It is interesting. I know that they want to get him in a strength program and that's cool, but let's, let's not forget. This is a, a 19 year old young man who was playing against grown men over in Europe. You know, this is not a guy who isn't used, I think, to the physicality of basketball, whereas maybe other guys are. I think even, you know, for Tyler Hero, as talented as he is, is still dealing with the physicality of basketball. And I think that, you know, you would say probably the biggest vice in his game is that he cannot take the hits necessary to be at maybe superstar level or all-star level, you know, getting to the free throw line on a regular basis, uh, dealing with uh, with teams swarming him and, and blitzing him and all that type of stuff. So for Jovic, while he's not maybe the most physically intimidating looking guy, he still is 6'11". Dude's huge. Stand next. He's huge. And he has played with big bodies overseas. And I think that, you know, maybe is showing that the development will be a, a lot faster along than we, maybe we thought. And even I thought. I didn't think so. I know Leroy's going to brag about that on the radio show. He's like, hey, you don't know that Jovic isn't going to be good. Me, 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 me. I'm sure, I'm sure I'll hear that on the show today. Because I'm going to go full in the paint on Jovic, dude. Heat cola. Refreshing. 